Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux, I am Peter, that is Connor and we talk about movies on this show and in this episode we are swinging back to a, a trilogy that we started just over a month ago uh, with Samurai 2 Duel at Ichijojo Temple. Uh, so we had the first one, uh, Samurai 1 Musashi Miyamoto, uh, this is the second one uh, from uh, director Hirosho in, in, in Inagaki. Uh, just, I was looking over, just to make sure I got it right, I was looking over and checking before I said it, just in case. Just in case. So that's coming out in 1955, and we'll start spoiler free as we do, uh, and we'll warn you someplace in the middle before we go into spoilers, and this of course is the middle of, uh, I mean the title gives it away, but it's a samurai trilogy. Uh, and we compared the first one all to an origin story and the start of the journey, and kind of how he, he, he gets set on this path to become this character. Uh, and this very much is a middle chapter. Uh, where he is still trying to find himself, he is he is going around with the name Musashi Miyamoto now, and mm-hmm. he challenges uh, the head of a school to a duel, not necessarily to the death, just just a duel. But of yeah. course, there's uh, some politicking that happens as a result of this, and some delays. Some new characters, most of the old characters come back and advance their plots as well. So it feels truly serialized in that sense, and yeah, we go from there. So Connor. You haven't seen this before. You've been, you're watching this trilogy for the first time. Did you enjoy number two? I did. Yes, uh, I thought it was better than the first one. That was better than the first one. Cool. Um, I probably agree with that. I do think the first one has a better structure. Yeah. I, I think this one, the structure suffers a little bit from being the middle middle film because it does kind of feel like it doesn't really have a start. It doesn't really have an end. <laughs> it's just kind of... Yeah, it, it's got the loose structure of, okay, this is the duel, you know, you know the challenge and, and yeah. overcoming that. And it has some level of an arc, but it hasn't got the full arc in there because yes. of that. I, I think I often feel like the middle film in a trilogy offers suffers the most for me because it can't... It's not got the big grand opening where it sets up what the story is going to be. It doesn't have the big conclusion. It's just the middle of it, and yeah. um, for for me that usually uh, it doesn't mean that the middle film is always the weakest. Uh, it, it often isn't, but I think on a whole, a lot of the problems I have from middle films kind of are always there. Like they always seem to have those problems in trilogies. That's fair. I think I weirdly I often find middle films my favorite because they're not concerned with having to establish everything that's already done. Yeah, and they don't feel the need to go over the top with a big climax ending. They can they can set a really comfortable level for the characters. Yeah. Um. So, in this one, um, there's more sword fighting, uh, more duels as you'd expect, and you know, for in spoiler free territory here, I think we can quite happily talk about how good those fights look. Oh yeah. Um, lo- lots of uh, camera mounts like tracks and stuff like that. Um, you know, it'll be very steady, very confident, and then there's a, there's a fight later on where it eventually spills on to kind of the, 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 the wet, muddy field of, I think it's like a potato farm or something like that. Um, yeah. And he's sort of like backing down like the, just the, the, the thin, dry like line of the, the farm. Yeah, there's, there's a bit in the middle where you could, you know, a little pathway, a little bridge yeah. that you and can go across. as he's backing there from, lo- and not just one person, from lots of adversaries, um, it like the camera starts going back with them, and again, it, it's a very impressive looking and confident film. Uh, it is. That is still true throughout this one. That that has not changed, um, and I, I think it's a really neat counterpoint as well because it it's almost like the uh, the scene from the first one where he's running with Otsu and there's like a, the entire town's chasing them and they're just hiding. Whereas this time we have a very similar scene where there's an entire like you know twenty, thirty, forty men chasing them. But instead, he's standing his ground and fighting. Now yeah. he's good enough that he can maybe fight them off. Or at least he thinks he can. At least he thinks he can, yeah. But it's a, it's a nice evolution from 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 that movie. Uh, yeah. And calls back to it really well. I think visually, the only thing that might disappoint me in comparison to this is... is I, I, I get it, it's a creative choice and I understand it. Mm-hmm. But the colour isn't quite as vibrant, right? In the first one, everything's new to this guy. And, you know, everything's... It, 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 there's there's all this sense of wonder you know we we spoke about that a lot where there's all, all these really bright colors and they're a bit more muted here where okay no he's he's matured a bit and things have settled down it, it's still colorful but it's not as over the top as the first one it's very i i, I even go as far as to say he's a little bit disillusioned um because part yeah. of the part of the arc of the movie is that people keep telling him that he 
he's not he's not at peace with himself he's not he's not at peace and therefore he acts out of anger sometimes he acts out of rage he lets his emotions get the better of him and therefore he's not a true samurai and that's kind of what he's trying to overcome throughout the film and i think the like him it's almost as if he himself does not respect his surroundings yet and i think that's yeah. kind of what the the the, the coloring and how the movie feels what that's going for um, uh, like I said, it makes sense for the story. Yeah. It's just slightly disappointing to look at compared to the first one with all those colours that were just, it was just a, a joy to watch. Yeah. Uh, that said, there's a lot of good visual moments in this one for sure. There is. Especially yeah. in the fights themselves. Um, they're really well handled, very confident. Um, you know, it, it doesn't feel like we get to a fight scene. It's like, oh, the, the, the plot needs a fight scene, so I'll just do it. Because some directors feel like. Uh, we'll just get through the fight scene because it needs to be there, but it's, it's that's never the highlight. Whereas here, it feels like no, 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 no. I, I, I almost wonder if the genesis of the idea was no, I want to shoot some fight scenes. I want to like give make them be the actual pinnacle of the story, where the the drama of what he's going through plays out in the fight, and the camera yeah. work reflects that as we're following him, uh, in combat. So, because uh, the movie starts with a duel, he's, he's got a duel with uh, you know a random you know raider or something like that. Um and he's I, I always forget the name of the weapon the other guy's using. Uh, uh I can never remember. So Kurosanaga or something like that. It's, it's called yeah. so, something along those lines. But it's, it's basically a sickle on the end of a chain. And so yeah, it's, it's an interesting it's a different weapon. It's like oh no, he's not fighting someone else with the same like a with like a katana, he's fighting someone with a completely different weapon. And it you know becomes about how he deal with that. Um but he's arrogant. He he he, he you know, he, he kills him at the end of the scene just because that's what you're supposed to do maybe because he's a little bit angry he, because he can yeah um and this this random passerby chastises him for it and says no 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 no. a real samurai doesn't do that a real samurai wouldn't kill just because uh, yeah it'd be better than that yeah you, you make the choice in the situation because you have to um and you play things smart and you play things calmly uh, you, you don't let your emotions get the better of you and that is definitely the, the, the point of the film that's the arc yeah. of the film but there's a lot more going on in the film because we have other characters we have Otsu who's still w- longing for him we have Akemi with her mother and Matahashi his old best friend who are what are they up to we, you know, we see them again uh, and obviously I, I might critique that we don't get enough of those things oh really uh, okay. yeah given out how much they were set up in the first one I feel like there'll be a reasonable amount with them in the third one i'm sure yeah uh but here i felt like i think that that might be the side of the plot where i felt the middle movie uh problem of okay we're kind of treading water with their stories okay i i got some good drama out of the the love stuff though because again it's almost love triangle at a point but i was actually kind of into what they were doing with it in terms of the Mm -hmm. scenes and how they played out uh there's there's a great scene early on where akemi who happens to be in the same city now as uh, as Otsu? Otsu is like selling fans at the bridge, you know, trying to like make make ends meet, and Akemi runs into her, and it, and Otsu opens up about you know she's longing for a man, she's waiting for a man to come back, and it, you know she's she's heartbroken, and Akemi relates to her because she's also waiting for someone, uh, but they, they don't know they're talking about the same guy. They're both talking talking about uh, Misashi, yeah, uh, and they don't realize that, and I thought that was an interesting little touch. It, because I think you're waiting throughout the film for Mishashi to run into Otsu again. Because I think Otsu is the one we're rooting for, right? She's the one we're rooting yeah. for. Especially as the movie goes on, because Akemi does some questionable things uh, mm. as the movie goes on. But I think Otsu, even from the first film, she's the one you're kind of rooting for. And you, you, she's the one you kind of hope gets the happiness. And you're kind of rooting for her to meet him again. You, you want that, that meeting to happen. I think it's really interesting and kind of exciting as a viewer to have her meet someone else from the first movie that she doesn't know they don't know yeah. they're both related to the same story but we do um it's a bit coincidental of course but that's okay i think in this case because that's kind of the fun yeah i, you know what, I saw something on uh, it might have been twitter like a few weeks ago and going say you know it's, i don't get when people complain about coincidences in movies because life, life's full of coincidences like all the time yeah and I'm like, I mean, that's true. So I, you, I maybe, maybe I should forgive a couple of, of coincidences in movies you, a little bit more. You can forgive some. Here, here's here's my rule when it comes to coincidences in movies. Um, you can forgive some uh, late on, but my general rule is that you get your one big coincidence at the start of the story because that's what starts the story, right? Mm. You know, you have character A meet character B in a really random way because that's what gets the story started, and that's okay sure. because that's what triggers it. That's that's what gets it moving when a coincidence becomes a problem is when later on they solve a problem 
with a coincidence that's really convenient and it's like oh well that's that's convenient that that happened or so on yeah you know i think i think for me it's it's it depends if it deflates if it undermines a character moment mm. uh that's a problem you know if, if the coincidence undermines whatever they were trying to do you know it undermines their character that's a problem yeah um, i think uh, i think that's a good point i think it's also like it can work when the movie's kind of built around it happening a lot like if you've got a movie where you're following multiple characters and they kind of coincidentally run into each other you know different sets of characters run into each other and that's kind of the point of the movie is that you're playing with the idea of all these chance meetings that, between different people yeah. it's like okay that wouldn't stick out to me as bad because that's kind of the concept of the movie and i think it's when it, it it comes into a movie and feels like it's there for to make the script easier because yeah. this is how we can solve this problem and it's like eh, but it's, you know it, it feels cheap it feels cheap and lazy yeah, it's, um, it's it's if your character is trying to stop something happening, and then it just it, it gets stopped by something completely separate and you know coincidental. That's a little frustrating yeah. because your character had nothing to do with it. It didn't actually they didn't accomplish anything. Yeah, unless of course it's in a comedy and that's the joke. Yeah, yeah, comedies are different rules entirely. Again, like, there's always context where you can flip our rules on our head and it works. But yeah, I mean typically, yeah, that that, that would be what I'd say. Uh, yeah. but I, I think here it's like again this is the one coincidence right at the start of the movie I mean arguably there's maybe one or two later on that I think maybe go a bit too far where other characters run into each other and it's like okay right we just keep having more coincidences now but I think this one is great because it's kind of because right near the start of the movie and it's like oh like now they're meeting each other uh, and they don't know who each other are um, and yeah, it, was, it was exciting yeah. well, so. I, said, I, think, I think you know the ones where it's people meeting each other I can forgive quite a lot because the amount of times I meet someone who knows a friend of mine just you know oh, coincidentally sure. yeah. like it, it happens a lot a lot more than you'd think right yeah so i mean I, I can i can forgive those quite quite easily so so uh yeah so so the plot of the movie is he, he, he challenges this this uh this uh schoolmaster this someone who teaches uh you know combat martial i don't know i never quite specified what martial arts i think it was just uh yeah sword play i guess i guess yeah i guess i guess it's, it's like a samurai school right yeah i, I don't think maybe they specified it once and i just i've, I've it's, i'm i'm forgetting but like I, yeah. I don't feel like i ever got a specific what the school was it never felt important to, to know specifically what they were doing right because we, we cut to like the a scene where he's just beating up student after student not killing them or anything just beating them up and it's the, the the head of the school's not there, and he comes back later and he's like, "Oh, you've been challenged." But everyone keeps talking about, "No, no, you're too good for this this peasant. Uh, we'll send someone else to deal with him." And you know, it becomes a, a question of honor. Uh, of course, the notable new character we get in this one, uh, Sasaki, he is also a samurai who has recently graduated from some big prestigious school, and he comes in and right away he's he's kind of teased with some mystery because uh, uh, Masashi goes to get his blade fixed or cleaned or whatever um and he there's like another katana there it's a really nice katana and he's like oh who's that you know who belong? i'd love to meet the samurai who who uses that one um yeah. and then the guy who polishes them talks about how oh he you know he's, he's really good he's gonna be a, a real name for himself one day yeah um and we, we, we get this scene before we ever meet him and it's just like, oh, who's who's this? But it's really notably bright blue, so you so you it's very recognizable and distinct. So when you see him later on, you're like, oh, that's him, yeah. that's that dude. Um, and he's he's an interesting character because he has a very different demeanor to like everyone else. He almost feels like he's really cocky, but he's also really like laid back and calm and stays back. He doesn't. It's kind of like what Masashi's trying to achieve in the film is this like peace with himself, and yeah. it's kind of like this guy has that, but is also a really cocky bastard about it at the same time. <laughs> mm no i know what you mean it's a really interesting it's an interesting performance actually it's a really interesting it is, performance. Yeah. yeah he has this like chaotic sort of look behind his eyes but he's actually really calm and good at what he does yeah uh so you know they set him up and you know not to not to go too far ahead but clearly he's being set up more for the next film than yeah. he is for this one definitely but he's interesting enough in this one that it's okay oh yeah yeah because he, he kind of he kind of integrates into the main plot because he accuses the school of having no honor because they don't want to have this one-on-one -on -one fight they try and cheat and send other people and he he like because i think what they're really doing in this one is they're setting up that he is worthy of like a one-on-one -on -one fight with musashi he is someone who is honorable who is a fighter 
and you know is this so you know um but no the movie's really strong like i say the performance is all good the direction is good fights are great um it... so, so, so i want to mention that i think we we, we may have undersold last movie oh go on was the music because oh, i yeah. you know last time we said yeah it's it's pretty good but it sounds just like what you expect from this time right mm-hmm. and then some of those themes came in and instantly recognizable i'm like yeah okay i remember this theme sure yeah and i think that's uh stronger than, than we gave it credit for before because i didn't think i would remember them uh, as strongly as i did yeah. oh, i mean i got hyped as soon as the movie started and the main theme kicked in yeah um i was like it wasn't even just the main theme though there yeah. was like five or six throughout that i was like oh yeah this one as well i like this piece yeah for different characters for different types of situation yeah, yeah there was there was it's got a strong thematic sort of through line in the music it does yeah uh that carries throughout the, the, the trilogy so that was very good so I, i'm just i'm sort of rounding up because i want to go into spoilers now i want to give this yeah. just so i can i can talk a bit more freely about where things go um so obviously the big fight, you know, eventually, you know, the 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 they the send like thirty, forty men, and the 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 head of the school, uh, Yoshioka or Yosh Yoshioka, 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 yeah, Yoshioka, Yoshioka. Um, he he, uh, it does eventually shot, but he shows up after <laughs> Masashi's already like fought through like tons and tons of guys, and he's already, he's clearly tired. It feels like, kind of convenient, he's right? Like, yeah, I have honor. I will fight you, and I'm like, yeah. After the other thirty guys have already had a go at, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, and obviously this is the big ending moment in the movie where he doesn't kill him. He like quickly like gets him down. He hurts his arm, and he he can kill him. And this is where he remembers everything everyone said to him throughout the film about him not having compassion, about not having this that or whatever. And he chooses not to. And there's hints of it throughout the film, you know, because when he first tries to get his sword polished, uh, the guy's like, "No, this is a, this is a murder weapon. I will not polish this because you are a murderer." And he yeah. leaves in an angry huff. But he, as he's walking away, he calms down. He turns around. He goes back. And humbly request, would you please reconsider, um, you know, tending to yeah. my sword? And then he accepts, and he's like, "No, I can't do this, though." But he, uh, here's the here's the guy who can do this, and that's what leads him to the other guy who's got the the fancy blue sword. Um, so you know, that's that's clearly the arc of the film. Is he kind of? And I think a big thing here is is the is the distractions because obviously at the end of the film, after this all happens, he does actually collapse, and Otsu eventually, of course, sees him, tries to convince him to come with her. And he's like, no, no, I've chosen my sword over over a love life, over women. Um, mm. but by the end of the film, after he's collapsed, he he is tempted. He is, you know, he, he pulls her, you know, by the river, and and tries to just make love to her right there and then. And she kind of like pushes him away and says, no, like not not right now. Yeah. Uh, even though she's been clearly longing for him and pining for him, she almost becomes a nun at one point because he's turned her down. And she's like, well, I might as well be a nun because massage doesn't and want me. She gets me. pretty close to to slashing off all her hair. Yeah, yeah. and she makes the choice not to um and i i think it's noble she does because i think that that's because i one of the one of the even though i like her character a lot i think in the first film we did have a minor complaint that she never has much agency on her own yeah and i felt like her decision not to wasn't purely for him i think that was like her choosing who she is Re- realizing it that she was kind of doing it out of spite yes and that, that that was not really the point of what she should be doing yeah um so that was kind of nice for her i thought was for her to make that choice and yeah. at the end here, like sort of pushing her, even though she does clearly want to be with them and wants to run off and get a cabin or whatever people do in this time period when they're in love, um, uh, he kind of gets a, a little bit angry, a little bit in a huff, and he grabs his stuff and he leaves. And it, it kind of leaves with the idea that he is now saying no to love in general. That's him. He is officially done with love because it causes too many distractions. And he can't quite understand it. And if he wants to be a true samurai who's at peace and understands his surroundings and himself, he can't have that mixing things up. Yeah. Um, and that's how we kind of leave the movie with him walking off. Obviously, there's a tease for um, uh, uh, Sasaki, who watches him walking off, saying, oh, I keep training my friend. But, you know, the yeah. implication that one day... Like, you'll be ready at some point. Yeah, one day we'll be good enough to go against each other, and that's kind of the where we leave off. Um, which is a fun little tease for the third one. But but I, 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 like, I like that, because throughout the film, we see him like a, like a, a brothel, where they're trying to like sort of flirt with them and give him drink. He doesn't drink, he's already made that choice and you know apparently even the the the, the, the madame of the brothel even even i say brothel obviously i should be saying geisha house but uh the, the madame of the brothel even seems to get a crush on him and i'm like damn everyone's got a crush on musashi because he because akemi of course when she finds out he's around 
she wants to like you know run away with him she tries to you know and she she actually lies to us so it's actually the scene where you kind of like because up until that point she's kind of a victim herself from her mother and yeah. you know from her can i even try to marry her off to uh, yoshioka the head of the school funnily enough and she says to us no he promised to marry me we're engaged like you know he's going to run away with me and oh she doesn't want to believe it and then later on so that she sees him she sees her hug him but then he kind of pushes her away and is mm. is is clear that it's not true but it, like there's that that's the scene where she's like lying to her and you're like no nah, she she might not be as bad as her mother but clearly some of that conniving manipulation is in yeah. there yeah definitely I, I i really like the scene where they both realize that it's the the same guy that they're mm. waiting on you know, because they, you know, like you say, at first they they just, yeah, they meet and you know they're there to strike it up a conversation. And they're friendly as well. They seem to like each other at that point. Yeah, exactly. And then once they realise that they're they're competition almost, uh, it kind of switches and and suddenly you get that rivalry come in. And again, it feels very much like Otsu's pretty innocent and just doesn't want to believe it. And Akemi's trying to like make her feel bad. She's trying to yeah. scare her off. And it's like, okay, well, I was already kind of on Otsu's side, but like at this point, you've just kind of you've you've solidified mm-hmm. it like you know i'm with her now um yeah. and i think that's what makes the ending interesting is that it's not just the obvious happy ending um and i, I actually can't remember how it ends in terms of a lot of this stuff next f- film i remember what the ending scene is but i don't remember how it leaves off in a lot of the relationships it's been a while since you watched it i take it yeah it's been like six seven years i think something like that yeah fair enough um so I'm looking forward to uh to to discovering that, but I think it adds this interesting weight at the end of the movie where it's kind of they've both made choices for themselves, and even though Otsu doesn't want him to go at the end, you respect why he's making that choice. You respect why she made her choice. So you respect them both as characters. I think I think that, that's yeah. what this one does really well is that by the end of the movie, she has her own agency and mm. you you kind of you're still rooting for her and you still i think deep down you still want them to kind of like you know get together by the end whether yeah. or not that's possible or not is, is another question but you, you kind of want it deep down yeah sure yeah i, I think uh, it does a good job of advancing everyone a reasonable amount because obviously you say it's it's the middle part of the story you can't yeah. have them finish their stories they finish their arcs but you have to have them do something otherwise it's not really a movie right joe you know it's funny i think it's one of these things that you know, obviously TV does this all the time because TV is serialized and it can run for years and hundreds of yeah. episodes. But they, they, they only get to start and end once, really, right? Sure, they have season enders and season openers, but they really only get to start and end once. So yeah. TV is really good at it and will have lots of great episodes because they get really good at, you know, doing it as chapters. Whereas yeah. I think movie trilogies only get one chance because they have one start, one end, and they have one middle chapter. So they only get one chance to do a middle episode. And... It's their first try in a lot of cases, so yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. I, I think in in some ways, like this is better than the first for these sorts of side plots. In that, the first one, it, it's you know we we spoke a lot how it's a, an origin story, mm. but mainly for Musashi, right? The other stuff, it's there, but I, I don't think any of them had any sort of arc. Everything serves Musashi's plot, yeah, yeah. Whereas here, they all actually move forward individually, and. and I said it's a little frustrating. I wanted more from most of these because it still feels a little imbalanced in that I'm getting little bits, but I wanted more in this movie. Yeah. But there is still it's an improvement on the first one. I think that's a trade off, though. I, I think I think you could say that the first one is better because it's more focused. Yeah. Um, and this one feels a bit more scattershot, but everything it's doing is really good. Um, one side plot I've not talked about yet is that Matt Hatchie tries to go to his friend. Uh, it doesn't go very well. And he ends up, he, he witnesses a, a random guy, because there's basically the hordes of the school are out looking for Masashi, and they attack this random guy, this poor guy who looks kind of similar. Um, and after they, they, they beat, the, beat the shit of him to the point where he's dying, and they go, oh shit, it's not him. Crap, everyone just run. And they just all leave. And Matahachi comes up and like says, you know, can I get you any help? And he's like, I've died. Just deliver this, please, this scroll. And it turns out it's a scroll for Sasaki. This, again, this is before we've met him, I think. And it's it's his diploma for graduating from this this school, this martial mm. arts school. And later on, he, he runs into his parents, uh, Matahachi, that is, and he claims that it's his scroll and that he graduated. And he changed his name because no one would accept his name because because of the dishonor that he's already went through. So he changed his name to Sasaki. And we get a very hilarious scene 
where I mean, admittedly, it comes right after that he tries to. Well, his parents want him to kill Otsu because Otsu will know that he's not really this guy. She she can finger point you as this as Matahachi, so you have yeah. to kill her. So his parents are awful. And oh, absolutely. He he runs out after into the into the, the the woods and tries to kill her, but he actually says, "No, no, I don't want to kill you. They want me to kill you. I want to run away with you." Until she says she's in love with uh, Masashi, and then he tries to kill her. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really darkly funny when you stop and think about this scene it is it is <laughs> and then and then S- S- sasaki just happens to like pop up and uh, kind of intervenes and then he's like oh so who are you and matahachi really proudly puts out his chest with he's, he's holding his sword and he's like i am sasaki and i have graduated from this because his mom's like there he's like ah oh, he's graduated from this fancy school blah blah and sasaki just starts laughing he's like oh really is it and he's like why do you think that's funny he's like Oh, why do I think that's funny? Shall I introduce myself? <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is one of the, the times where maybe a little too coincidental, right? Yeah, sure. Like, Musashi seeing the sword was nice setup. Yes. I think Matahachi being involved in this as well through the through the scroll, uh, this might be a little bit too much just to just to have him in play. Just too many connections, yeah. No, no, I can I can see that. I can see that. Um but no, it was really entertaining though. I can't deny I was laughing a lot during during yeah, that. It was scene. amusing, yeah. Yeah, and you have some minor characters come back. The monk's back. He's there. He's the one that's going to make her a nun. Uh, yeah. So that is. There's a kid who uh, Masashi meets at the start, who who he sends off to the monk. Because it's funny. I think the opening scene might make you think, oh, he'll be around for the whole movie. He'll be following him around, and that'll be like the plot of the movie. But he actually he gets shipped off to the monastery. Yeah, like, it's like, uh, all right, I'm done with you. Yeah. Um, but again, there's a lack of caring. But I suppose he does get him to safety, though. He gives him, puts him somewhere safe before he. No, it's true. He travels on. I, mean, I think the point is that he he doesn't have a, a, a real empathy in like, oh no, you're, mm. all right, come along, I'll teach you. Yeah, he he hasn't he hasn't reached that point of wanting to to pass along what he's learned and and become a good enough person for that. Yeah, but know, at the same time, he's not an awful person that he's just gonna let the kid yeah. die. He's all, all, obviously a much better person than he was throughout the first film. But he still feels very egotistical and that he's determined to be the best he can be and believes yeah, he is the best. He's yeah. kind of selfish as well, right? Yeah. Like, everything is about him. But by the end, he, he at least learns uh, empathy and enough not to kill people. Because that's the other thing. Even before that scene, he's, t- he's fighting all the guys and he's holding his own for a while. But he eventually makes the choice to run, to, to, to retreat. Not, not run away like he did in the last film, but retreat You know, with his sword out tactically. And he mm. does get away. And you know the monk kind of laughs when he hears about this from the kid, and he's like, "Ah, he's learning. He's finally learning." Um, yeah. You know, it's strategy. It's, it's not about proving that he can do it every time. Um, there's no shame, and you know, right? Uh, because the, the the honor was showing up when he was supposed to and having a fair fight, which is what the other guy didn't do. Um, yeah. It, it's it's like a, a lot of the movie is about the image of a samurai versus what it's actually supposed to be, right? Mm. You know, and I think it's funny that the image of the samurai is probably. Uh, you know, even worse now, right? In the sense of, it's been very glorified in movies over the last oh, sure, you know, 50, yeah. 60 years. And then this is about cutting to what it actually is supposed to be. Yeah, and it's, it's, I think it's great that the villain of the movie, if you can even call him that, I, I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like calling uh, Yoshioka the villain is kind of weird because it's kind of his second in command who's constantly like driving everything that's happening. He's just kind of like this Lutz who's like is there. He just, uh, I think he's very similar to Musashi at the start of the movie in the sense that he just capitalizes on the opportunities. He doesn't turn them down, right? You know, when he, when he shows mm. up and he sees Musashi, he's, you know, all tired from fighting all the men. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll fight you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not to say he's not an awful person because eventually when he learns that Akemi's in love with his rival, he, he actually rapes her. And then, yeah. you know, she, there's actually a scene where she looks at her mother like and with, with, with hate, which actually inspires her mother and her, like, scheming friend a toji to run off together um uh, because of course because of course yeah so maybe we'll get more of them in the third one i can't remember i hope we do just so they get their comeuppance because they're awful people <laughs> i feel like you need to have them uh especially for, for a kemi at least to yeah to, to get that moment of satisfaction for her yeah absolutely um but because that's the thing he's such a coward and like just a a, a little weasel and then he does this and you know, and it's the idea that he does this, you know, against the Kemi who maybe isn't strong enough to defend herself against him, mm. um, and it makes him like a little like, conniving. So he is a villain. Like I, I shouldn't have said he's not a villain, but he's not, he's not an antagonist. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, was, I still feel he's similar to Musashi. So I mean, maybe okay, you say he's worse because he, you know he rips this one, but 
Musashi, he kills the people that he doesn't really need to, right? Like, he just kills them. Yes. And again, it's the same idea of, okay, no, you're going, you're doing things you don't need to do. You shouldn't be doing. They're different things, but I think the the point is that they're supposed to be equally abusing their position of power as samurai. I think it's not, it's not even abusing their power of what they're doing. It's more they're asserting their power. They're saying, no, no, I'm more powerful because I can can do this. Yeah. And the same. Okay. Uh, the idea that it will look weak if they don't, uh, yeah. to a point. Um, and Musashi, of course, by the end of the film, is learning, no, no, like, the, the honor is standing down. I don't need to win. I've won this. Yeah. Um, so, no, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's got a good through line there, of course, throughout the it does, film. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's a great progression of all the characters from the first one. Um, and it was, you know, it's fun seeing the characters again. It's like, no, no, I'm glad to see Otsu again and Akemi and everyone else. And like, mm. where are we advancing everyone now? So, I remember what the core setup is for the next one is. I mean, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the premise, right? Just to get you excited. The uh, Musashi and uh, Sasaki meet at the start of the film, and they basically arrange a duel, right, for, for at Ganryu Ryu Island because that's what the name of the movie is. Of course, I figured as much. Yeah, yeah. and they say, okay, we'll duel in one year. Mm. I thought it would be a time when you when you said yeah. that, I was like, oh, it's, it's not going to be in a week. It's going to yeah. be in like I thought it might be slightly longer, but yeah. I could see uh, the idea of go off and train and become better yeah. for it. They, they, they go off and train for a year to come back, um, and obviously they have the fight at the end. But um, but no, nah. so it's it's cool because I think what's fun is is that he's a good antagonist, but he's not a villain, right? As opposed to Yoshioko in this, who's a villain but not an antagonist. Yeah, where he's an antagonist in that he will challenge the hero but he's not necessarily a great villain he much like Musashi wants to prove that he, he's, he's the best he's, he's a very similar character to yeah. Musashi right you know like arguably he's slightly better in the sense that he seems slightly further along that journey right now yeah at least from what we can see but you know the idea that they're, they're kind of both fresh young samurai kind of wanting to prove themselves to the world make a name for themselves yeah um, so that's what the third one's going to be about, uh, but no, uh, no, I like the second one a lot. Um, I think it, it progresses everything from the first one. Um, I think I may like the first one a little bit more. Yeah, because um, it's a bit tighter, uh, a yeah. little, little bit more focused. Um, no, I thought this was too. This is about ten minutes longer. I, I didn't feel the length. The length was fine. It moved along very briskly. Yeah, yeah. If anything, like that, I could have done with an extra ten, fifteen minutes on it to, mm-hmm. to flesh out some of the side stuff and. Maybe then it wouldn't feel as as fragmented, it, yeah. Because it would, you know, they'd feel a bit more natural. Yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, but no, really, really good. Uh, I mean, everything we said that was good about the first one kind of carries over here. Uh, yeah. And and then some. So, uh, no, it's really really good stuff. So, uh, that that is Samurai Two. Uh, so I should probably rate the film then. So Connor, what you uh, what are you giving it? Yeah, I'm going up about a point from the last one, giving it an eight point five. I have the last one on nine, so I'm going to go down a half point and go 8.5. Okay, balanced out. But clearly, um, you know, I, I love it a lot. So, uh, yeah. well, we'll be back for the third chapter of this trilogy uh, sometime next month, I imagine. We don't want to leave it too long, so we're still yeah, yeah, fresh. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it, yeah. Yeah, uh, so we'll be back with this in uh, the not-too-distant future, but that is that is Samurai Samurai 2, Duel at Ichi Jojo Temple. So there you go. That is that. So we'll be back next week with another movie. Uh, it will be the Patreon pick, I believe, at the month, which is uh, Women in the Dunes, which is another foreign film, actually. Uh, so that's what we're doing next time. Um, of course, the new vote's up for patrons. If you go to patreon.com slash TV at the $5 tier, you get access to the monthly voting, which you get to vote on an episode of Influx. You also get to vote on an episode of uh, 121 Overload and an episode of Streams After Midnight that I do with Tim. Um, and the vote... What's the theme this month? Oh, it's four movies from the top 90s list because at the end of this month uh, you're getting a two part episode where we do our top 50 movies uh, of uh, foreign cinema uh, world cinema so this is a pl- this is a might be on it uh, this one Samurai 2 it could end well, up on yeah. there um, so we're going to do that but one, one of the, a new tradition we kind of started last time when we did uh, we did the top 90s list is that the vote that month on Patreon is four high ranking films from the previous list that we've not reviewed yet so there's four movies from the 90s and if I remember off the top of my head the four selections were Eyes Wide Shut, The Truman Show Silence of the Lambs and The Shawshank Redemption there it is yep. yes 
I knew you were looking because I saw you clicking and I was because last time I asked you if you knew what they were yeah. I think maybe at the end of last episode you were like nope <laughs> no, I don't remember this time. So I thought I better get it in case you don't actually remember. That's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the screams after midnight votes all movies about killer dogs, and <laughs> only Tim would come up with that theme. That, that was a Tim theme, yes. Uh, and then the Overload vote is, which is just two movies, is Twister versus Speed, which Matt picked Twister. And then I jokingly picked a movie from the same director because I thought it was really funny that on the poster for Twister, if you, if you go to Patreon and look at the, the image, which you only see if you're a patron, admittedly, uh, on the poster for, for Twister it says from the director of Speed. So I thought it was really funny to put Speed right next to it and say, pick Speed instead. <laughs> oh, that is a dick choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like both movies, but... I assume speed. Matt does as well, to be yeah, honest. He probably does. I, I can't imagine Matt not liking speed. Yeah. Uh, pop quiz hot shot. Uh, but that, that, that's Samurai too. So go to Patreon. It does support us. It supports everything we do and keeps us going, uh, even at $1 a month, which uh, you know is, is, is worth more than watching all the ads on YouTube for a month. That said, if you can't submit on Patreon, then yeah, watch the ads on YouTube because that does help us out. Turn your ad block off, and if you want to help us out, you can do that. Uh, also, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. All of it helps. Uh, but that is us. So, yeah. Is there anything I want to promote, actually? Um, it's hard to promote streams because we're recording those so far in advance right now. I never know which one's going up. Uh, next, I could promote the last one, I suppose. The last one we did was uh, was actually another foreign film. It's called Thelma, which came from the, the crypt. In fact, I've not spoken about The Vault a long time, actually, on one of these. I should probably just mention The Vault quickly. Uh, we should be doing one of those soon, but The Vault is a list of to-do movies that our patrons get to submit. Uh, everyone can look at the list, you can get a link in the description to the to the list of The Vault, but patrons get to submit movies to it. It's basically a to-do list of movies that our patrons have picked for us. And the, the, the Screams version is called The Crypt, and that's what I'm, I mean there, is that we did a Crypt movie. So there should be a Vault movie coming up soon. Um, if you go to Patreon, again at the $5 tier you get access to that and you can add movies to that list. So, yeah. I've not mentioned that in a while, so I, th- I thought I'd... Yeah, and, and we don't pick them in any order, so... You could oh, yeah. add one this week, and we might still pick that for the next one. That is true. It is very possible. Um, as for how do we pick them, uh, sometimes it's random. I mean, for me and Tim, I literally rolled a d20 a couple of times to pick what one we were doing. But yeah. some... Sometimes random number generator will work. Yeah, and then sometimes it'll be... No, no, I actually fancy... I'm interested in that one. Let's do that one. Yeah, occasionally, you know, you you, you spoke earlier we're doing a, a world cinema uh, yes. quiz, uh, quiz list quiz. soon. <laughs> because you said that the quiz thing a second ago what quiz thing pop quiz oh right pop quiz hot shot yeah, yes it's in my mind uh, <laughs> but yeah because we're doing that we might look at it and see okay are there any you know world cinema films on here and pick from that yeah that's that's true we probably will pick a foreign film off the list if you really want to like you know uh up your chances of one getting picked yeah put a foreign film on it in the next week uh but there you go that that is summary too so thank you very much once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it Keep watching movies, guys, and we'll see you next time.